Hey there, awesome physics students. Let's talk about equipotential lines again. Uh, I have a few more examples I want to talk about. So uh, let's imagine that you have a positive 2q charge and a negative q charge here. What do the equipotential lines look like for this configuration? Well, let's think first about the electric field lines. I think it's a little easier to think about those. So let's just draw some electric field lines, some stubs for this one. And we know the electric field lines are going to be going into this negative charge. And this is a positive 2q charge, so it's going to have uh, field lines like this. But it has twice as much charge, so I need twice the field lines here. Okay. Now, uh, this line, of course, is just going to connect directly in here. And it's going to go from positive to negative, like that. Uh, this line is going to connect to this line here, so it's going to come like this. And that uh, doesn't go quite like that. And then this one too connects like that. So these go like that from positive to negative. And then these go out to infinity. They curve just a little bit, but they go out to infinity like that. And these come out like this at to infinity on that side. And this one goes off that direction to infinity. Okay, so now that I have the electric field lines drawn, let's draw the equipotential lines. So, um, let me draw one that's rather close here. It's got to be perpendicular to all of these lines here as I draw it. And that one's fairly easy to draw. Um, that one I'm going to call the, that one's the 20 volt line. Where would the 10 volt line be? Well, uh, let's put it out here. It's going to be spaced a little farther here. Like that, it's got to be perpendicular. So this is the 10 volt line. Uh, the zero volt line is going to be where this is uh, rather flat here. So this is going to be kind of like this. And it's not quite midway between because, uh, because the, um, this is a larger charge than this one. So this is the zero volt line. And then this, uh, what's, you, you notice I'm going from high potential and as I move towards the negative charge, I'm going towards low potential. What's lower than zero? Well, it's going to be negative. So this equipotential line here is going to be the negative 10 volt line. So a few points here. Uh, one, I know I need to go from high potential to low potential when I go from a positive charge to a negative charge. And the way I know that is if I put a positive test charge here, it would move from high potential to low potential. That's what positive charges do. Um, secondly, the spacing of the lines here is going to be a lot smaller than the spacing of the line here. How do I know that? Well, this is a bigger charge. There are more field lines here. The spacing of the equipotential lines needs to be smaller than the spacing of the equipotential lines here because it is a bigger electric field. And remember, electric field tells you how the voltage lines are spaced. Okay? For larger electric fields, the spacing is going to be smaller. All right. Um, I think that... Now, one more thing is if it moves from this line to this line, I have a positive charge that moves from the 20 volt to the 10 volt, how does that uh, kinetic energy that it gains compare to traveling from uh, this, uh, let's say, this 10 volt line to the 0 volt line? Well, it's going to be the same. Even though this is a bigger distance going from the 10 to the 0, it's still going to be the same. And similarly, going from the 0 to this 10, it's going to be the same kinetic energy gained going from here to here that it is from here to here. Okay? Well, let's do one more example here. Imagine I have uh, some lines that look like this. Um, so let's say this is the negative 20 volt line, this is the negative 10 volt line, this is going to be the 0 volt line, and this is the positive 10 volt line. So if I put a positive charge here, which way is it going to move? Well, uh, positive charges move from high potential to low potential. Well, if this is, if it moves this way, that's low potential to high potential, that's the wrong way. It's going to move this way, actually. So the force is, is on this positive charge is going to be that way. So if I'm going to draw electric field lines from these, I've got to make them both perpendicular to all of these, and I need to make it point in this direction from high potential to low potential. So my electric field lines would point like this. They've got to be perpendicular. 
here, and they've got a point like that. Similarly here, we've got a point from high potential to low potential, and they've got to be perpendicular. Okay, now let's say I had a uh, 2 coulomb charge, and it's moving from the 0 volt line to this uh, 20 volt line here. How much energy is that going to take? Well, uh, to find the change in potential energy, I just take the charge that I'm moving times the change in potential itself. And the change in potential itself is, well, I do um, uh, final minus initial. So this is going to be negative 20 volts uh, minus 0, which is negative 20, times 2 coulombs. And so this is going to be negative 20 times 2 is negative 40 joules. Okay, So that tells me that the potential energy has reduced. Now does that make sense? When you have a ball and you drop it in a gravitational uh, field, what happens to it? It feels a force down in the direction of the electric, excuse me, in the direction of the gravitational field. And the potential energy as it falls reduces and so the change in potential energy must get smaller and so yes this does make sense um, on uh, for this charge okay uh, one more thing here uh, how does the electric field here compare with the electric field here the strength well the spacing of the lines here is a lot smaller here than it is here they're widely spaced apart and so when I take the voltage difference for those lines uh, and divide it by this physical spacing here. Physical spacing is larger here. It's going to be a smaller electric field than here. So here E is big, and here E is small. Okay. Uh, 